Welcome to Live Edge, episode number next time, Matt. I'm Amy. Welcome to the show. Tonight, we have a very special guest, Mr. Brent from BYOT, one of my favorite YouTube names out there. It's just genius. <laughs> if if you know what BYOB is, then it's genius, BYOT. So anyway, <laughs> tonight, uh, before we get started- Bring your own Barbies. That's right. I was thinking, bring your own biscuits. Oh. But, well, well, you, Barbies? <laughs> Barbies. So tonight, uh, uh, we got a sort of spotlight. If you don't know- <laughs> We have a Facebook community, facebook.com slash groups slash 730 Mobile Works. About 30,000 strong right now. We're growing. If you want to join that, all you have to do is answer two questions. Will you be nice and what's your favorite tool that keeps the bots out? And it agree, you agree to be nice because if you're not nice, see you. And so we just don't allow that nonsense in there. But this week's Sawdust of Spotlight in honor of Mario coming out this week. Of course. It has to be. I thought that was a cake Mario. when I first saw it. It is I'm not. I'm not going to lie. It's really... I think he said 52 different pieces to this project. It's scroll mm -hmm. saw. It's not CNC Looks for like those of you that don't like CNC. It is a scroll saw project from Mr. Willie Caps. All those pieces, plus he had to paint all of them. Fantastic job. Congratulations, man. That's, that's well, I saw cool. that on there, but did it that say if cool. he glued it or not, or he's just using it as a puzzle, like you can put it together? Uh, uh -oh. Did it say? Well, now we got Gorilla Goo. When I click oh, X, oh. it's gone. Okay. So I might have to well, go look it up for me. You've messed that up. So. I had to push a button. So there's that. <laughs> Super cool, though. Very cool. The Gorilla Glue is cool, too. Yeah, I mean, everybody likes glue. Yeah. Right. It's no tight bond, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's rude. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Tight Bond. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, without further ado, Mr. Brent from BYOT. How you doing, man? Thanks for having me. Hey, welcome. Welcome. So uh, I've been watching your channel for a few years now, probably a couple years at least. I think one of the first things I saw you build that popped up in my feed was the outdoor, um, uh, uh, outdoor bench or sectional that you built. Oh, yeah. A year yeah, or two ago. One. It's been a while. The one you torched. Yeah. What? Yep, he torched it. It's the oh, show shuggy bone look. Yeah. Oh. It was super cool. It was super cool. It does sound cool. So, first off, uh, how'd you get started putting out content? <laughs> well, it's a, a, you know, everyone has their own unique story, but mine, it was really where I was always in construction. You know, I was in a di number of different types of trades, whether it was physical labor, whether it was project management and so forth. And I graduated from construction management program and I realized that I was stuck at a, basically a desk for years. And I just absolutely hated it for the most part. You know, I was that individual that loved working with their hands. And all of a sudden I found myself behind a desk and at a certain point, I bought my house back in 2010, and it was the ugly duckling needed everything. And I started using YouTube at that point to really learn how to remodel an entire house by myself, because at that point I had a bunch of construction experience, but I didn't know how to remodel an entire house. And I just fell in love with YouTube. On a, on a personal note, I'm dyslexic, and so I just absolutely fell in love with this visual format that you were able to learn so much from, and you can just type in whatever you wanted, you probably could find it. But at a certain point, I couldn't find a video on a specific subject, and I said to my girlfriend at the time, now wife, you know, maybe I should do a YouTube video <clears throat> to help someone else out because YouTube's helped me so much. And of course, that one video led to another, led to another, and you know, 185 videos later, and it's my full-time career. <laughs> That's awesome. And when, when did you go full-time with it? So I went full-time back in October 2019. Okay. And I didn't go full-time because, you know, content creation was just booming. It was, it was more about getting out of a bad work relationship. And I just wanted to change, especially with the fact that I wanted to go off and build for myself. And so I started, I quit my job at that point. I started working nonstop f on home remodels, whether they're kitchen, bathroom models, decks, and so forth. And, you know, one month after I quit my job, of course, my wife told me she was pregnant with our first child. And then three months after that, COVID hit. So... Oh. It was a it was a blessing disguise for my personal business because all of a sudden I couldn't get into anyone else's house because no one was letting me in. 
But yeah. all of a sudden, video views just skyrocketed on YouTube because everyone's home. at home doing their DIY home improvement projects. Yep. And I was consistently producing content up until then, uh, not religiously every single week, but probably once every month or so. And all of a sudden, I, I saw this amazing reach where I was averaging, I was normally averaging approximately 250,000 views a month. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, I'm averaging over a million views a month. And wow. I said, again, said to my wife, you know, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get into, into anyone else's house, but this is feasible and this is paying the bills. So I'm going to push all my cards into this content creation thing and really see where it can go. And it was, it was by far one of the best decisions I could have ever made for myself. That's awesome. Yep. Super cool. Fortune favors the bold, as they say. So is it a boy or a girl? <laughs> that one was a girl, and my wife just gave birth to a beautiful little baby boy three months oh. ago. Congratulations. Oh, congrats. Yep. Oh, so we just got our hands full, and I'll, I'm going to enjoy those full nights of rest eventually, but we're not yeah. quite there yet. Well, our, our youngest son was nine before he started sleeping all night. No, he, so. was, he, he was eight. <laughs> Eight. I'm sorry. He was eight. I'm That's sorry. when we started sleeping all night because we gave up. We just said, whatever, man. Just do whatever you're going to do. He still don't sleep all night, and he's 21. So no, Most <laughs> most time, I get up at 4, 4 to 4.30 to go work out, and he's still awake. He's never yep. went to sleep. And then mm -hmm. by the time I come back in at 6, he's he's asleep. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, Mr. Sawdust has a question for you. He said, how many videos did you have when you went full-time? Now, did I understand you have 185 currently, or did you go full-time at 185? Uh, YouTube says you have 291, by the way. When I say uh, full form videos, or when I say videos, I yes. mean like actual full form, not shorts. Right. You know, okay. YouTube accounts for your short form now as videos. When, when I say videos, I specifically mean my long form content. Right. And yes, I do have okay. pr approximately 185 videos long form. And I believe when I quit my, uh, or when I went full time in content creation, I had probably, I probably had approximately 70 to 80 videos. And <clears throat> again, that was kind of, kind of slowly getting content out on a consistent basis or you know, somewhat consistent basis. But all of a sudden when I quit my job and all, and went full time into content creation, I fully put the gas to the metal and I was producing content om almost on a weekly basis. So that not only really pushes you into being in different avenues in content creation in the home improvement space, because everyone's looking for another different type of DIY home improvement video, but it also allowed me to really up my, the quality of my videos because I was doing it so consistently. Yep. Consistency is the key it to that. It is the key. <laughs> Uh, Miss yeah, Desiree says, sure. do you have any advice on a dog shower in the mudroom? They're putting one in their remodel, but there's not a lot of videos on that. Oh, well, that... Desiree, you need to do a video on that. Room. There we go. I, I'm actually in the midst of discussing a uh, a washroom dog shower because my go. sister just got a dog and they want a, a nice dog shower in yeah. their or washroom area. And I, I would have love not to have that. Yet. But please make sure you uh, you follow because I assure you that that will be a video that will be featured on BYOT in the very, not not very near future, but definitely within the next few months, most likely. And if anybody's wondering, I put links to uh, BYOT in the description of this video, uh, to his um, YouTube channel and his TikTok, as well as the URL on the screen goes straight to his website. But if you're interested in any DIY project other than the dog shower, he's probably got it on his uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> Anything from making mailboxes or building a mailbox uh, stand with the mailboxes, uh, shelves, decks, outdoor sheds. You scared her. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> you scared her. You have built up quite a library of, of DIY content. Yeah, I tend not to do the same thing twice, which is nice, which is a positive and a and a curse at the same time because yeah. you're always trying to learn new skills and do something that you haven't done before, which in all honesty is part of the reason why I love content creation because it's never boring. You're always doing something different. And I, I love pushing that envelope of trying to learn new skills. And it's a challenge once you've kind of remodeled your house, you're like, mm, 
What next? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, with that said, what's the like the most challenging project? I know we talked on the members only <clears throat> stream about the deck y'all just built in Florida, which was a kind of a collaboration project. But what's the most challenging project you've worked on? You know, it's it's always interesting to see what it, what becomes the most challenging and the one the one that i always go back to and think about that was more about the stress and the challenge of the actual project was this large project that i took on that was a tile tiling a rounded surface and it wasn't you know the the longest project i've ever done it wasn't the most intense project i've ever done but it was more about the circumstances around it because this was this was a project that i was supposed to take on right before covid hit or right after covid hit and of course when covid hit everything got pushed and no one was doing anything so it just got kept on getting pushed and pushed and pushed and all of a sudden they said you know, I was contracted to do this project for this restaurant. And of course it lands on the week or basically two weeks before my wife was supposed to give birth to oh, our, ch our first child. And of course this place was about a two hour drive away from where we live. So uh, me thinking that it was going to take, you know, two to three days, of course it took Oh, you know, four days and it was a nonstop four days of just trying to piecemeal every single piece of tile perfectly around this very large rounded surface, which was a, it was a pizza oven, a oh. very large pizza oven. And so it took an extremely long time to make sure it was perfectly rounded before we even got the tile for a, a proper substrate. And then I didn't want, my original plan was to also actually stay in a hotel while I was there, but because it was so close to the due date, I didn't want to potentially have an issue with my wife giving birth at night and yeah. me not being there. So I was driving two hours there and two hours back every single day, uh, just, long days. Just, just in case. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the fourth day comes around, I finally finished the project. I'm happy. Okay, my wife has not given birth yet. I'm a, I'm in the clear. It's done. I can go back home and relax. Get home at like 10:30 at night that night. I wake up the next morning feeling good because it's done. I can start my video editing process and my wife walks in at 9:30 a.m. and says, "I think my water just broke." <laughs> And, and yep, it did. And yep, we rushed straight to the hospital after that. So she just knew apparently how, uh, how important it was to, for me to be around. And she felt comfortable enough to have a baby once yeah. I got home. Hey, it's better than you being two hours away. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep, exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so you're doing DIY projects in other people's houses and filming them, right? Some of them? Yeah, so... So originally, the vast majority of the projects were all for my own house. But of course, when you do construction on your own house for years on end, you tend to run out of projects. And I, I still haven't fully ran out of projects because there are still a few that I'm going to be doing this year. But I'd say 75% of the projects I do are for other people. I have some I need done. So how do you, how do you, do they, do the people you're hiring, you know, change the subject. So we're, um. How close are you? You know, projects to do around here. So <laughs> they, uh, so if, do they already know you when they hire you or is it one of those things like, Hey, when they hire you and you're like, Hey, can I make a video of this? Like, how do you approach that? Yeah. I mean, night, the nice thing these days is that I don't take on any projects unless it's content related. So it has to be content related first. And, and they know that ahead of time because the vast majority of the projects I take on are for people or for family and friends. Yeah. And, you know, the nice thing again, that I have a beautiful track record of videos to showcase that promote my business yeah. and people are very willing to allow me to renovate their own homes because they know the quality of my builds. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a huge plus. I, yeah. You think about, uh, modern um 
handymen or even DIYers or construction uh, people are doing home renos and stuff. If if they would make content, like if you, if you ever watch RR Buildings, I don't know if you know him. Uh, I do. I, I love was, his I, Yeah, dude is awesome. I watched him on Instagram when he he only had like man probably fifty thousand followers or something when I started following him and just exploded. But the reason he took off and the reason his YouTube channel took off is because he's showing like the the nitty gritty of how he's doing things and his work is excellent. And when you show that on video, your business can do nothing but grow. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a testament to him. And I feel like it's really, that that's my focus too, especially in the content creation realm is the fact that I really love teaching people how to build. And there's plenty of content creators out there that are more just showing you the process of building, but there's a reason why I do very tutorial based audio and visual elements within my video structure because I truly want to help others learn how to build because that's what got me into YouTube. You know, that's why I love YouTube is because I found an, an amazing learning tool. Yeah, you're doing an excellent job. I mean, I, I've seen several of your projects and they're all just top notch. Yeah, Mr. Clark as well as the fact that everything's oh. filmed, so you kind of have to make sure everything looks good, otherwise people are going to call you out on it. Oh, yeah, they'll get you, man. If you make one mistake, they're going to get you. Mr. Clark wants to know from either of you, have you ever had anyone ask you to build a deck with flower box ends and having an outdoor kitchen? Built into it, I'm assuming that's what he's mm -hmm. asking. Built no, into I haven't, deck. but I have I have built plenty of decks and I've built a couple different kind of outdoor kitchen barbecue areas. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. You've got those on your channel, too, right? <clears throat> yeah, I got them all on my channel, but it's uh, I'd say it's more about just kind of working with the potential. I don't know if this is for his own home or for a client, but it's more about just either working with your existing structure and knowing those steps to get to a quality finish and, uh, and making sure it's actually structurally sound is always key. Yeah, very Especially much when so. building decks. Mr. Clark, Matt has never done that. We, we've never gone and built anything at someone else's yeah, house. I built a deck, but it was just our just own. Deck. Yeah. yeah. Not, there's nothing special about it. Uh, H2 Woodshop says, where do you live? Florida? Question mark. <laughs> I live basically as far as away as you possibly can from Florida if you're in the United States, which is Seattle. So it was, <laughs> I do not live in Florida, but I definitely appreciated the nice weather other than the fact that it was so warm while we we're working there. And I also appreciated coming home to very little humidity. <laughs> yes. I bet that was a shock to the system. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I, yeah, my body was not prepared for that one. <laughs> it's crazy. If y'all haven't watched, he's got a, a two-part, part one and part two on his channel, the deck build that he did in Florida. Uh, part two, a hurricane blew up on him while they were working. And, like, you just, you could tell that that whole project took a massive amount of planning. And uh, it just it's turned out, though. it turned out fantastic. And it's if you gorgeous. haven't seen that, you got to go, get, take, what, 30 minutes of your time and watch both videos. Like, it's excellent. Yeah, and it's it's amazing because there's so much that I haven't even included into that project as of yet, which I, I still might. There was still, a, 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 they call it uh, a palapa, but it's basically a tiki hut and a tiki bar. And there was an outdoor kitchen. There's a mural. We did turf. So there's so many other elements that we haven't even talked about on that project yet. So could could that be a standalone <laughs> video like the Tiki Hut? I saw that and I, I noticed that it was just kind of there. But could it could that be a standalone video like the whole outdoor kitchen build could be a standalone video with I know you had help from uh, what's her name? I'm sorry I missed it. I, I just left me. She does epoxy. They've done the oh, countertops and all. Yep. yep. Yeah, she yeah. was there, and yeah, yeah, I'm planning on featuring that. Uh, that palapa with the outdoor bar area. I'm not sure if I'm going to feature the outdoor kitchen as of yet or the turf yard, but I still might for sure. Yeah, I think I think the uh, I think that that tiki hood, the palapa, is that what you say? I think that'll do well. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I I specifically asked the question in that video: Would you like to see the palapa that is shown here and how yeah. it was built? And there was a resounding yes. Yeah. So I think so. 
John Eckhart says, God bless the Northwest. They're talking about the weather. <laughs> <Yeah. now. laughs> Miss Stephanie wants to know, says, what has been your best advice that you have received? Uh, life, projects, content creation, anything off the top of your head? That best advice you. that I've received and I give to everyone else that asks me that question, if they want my advice, is continuously continuously build upon yourself and continuously learn. And, you know, I get the question all the time of like, how do you know how to do so much? Because there's so many different projects I take on. And the advice I was given and the advice I always give back to people is just always build upon yourself because years down the road, even if you don't know how to remodel a house by yourself, you continuously learn and want to learn how to do things you all of a sudden have an amazing set of tools that you can accomplish and do anything. That's good advice. One of the things that I picked up on uh, when I was reading on your uh, webpage today or your website on the about me section was uh, you, you had a sentence in there that I, I tell people all the time is, uh, but you, the way you phrased it, you said the most important step is just to start because there are always a million reasons why you shouldn't do something. Mm -hmm. And you said, if you're truly devoted and passionate about something, you'll push through and find a way. I love it. Yeah, that's it's one of those things that I look back on where I was. You know, I still remember to this day in bed with my wife uh, the night before I was going to give my two week notice to my old boss and just like tearing up thinking about like, what am I going to do? Like, I've always worked for someone like I don't know what I'm doing after this. And <laughs> she had so much support that, you know, you never know what you're capable of until you push through yep. and actually do it. <laughs> we have, we have very similar stories because I was in the same boat. I, I, I can remember struggling and, and if it wasn't for her, I would probably still be going to work every day, <laughs> putting uniform on, but she was like, you can do it. You got it. You got it. Never once yep. did she doubt me or have give me any reason to doubt me. So she's been my number one motivator. And I'm yep. coming home yep. next month. <laughs> and she's getting nervous now. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, congrats. Woo. Yeah, I know I've got, yesterday it was 33 days left, so I didn't go to school today. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow it will be 31 days left. Woo, that's exciting. Yep. Congrats. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous though, but. She got it. She do all right. Uh, well, yeah. Mr. Clark <laughs> says, how much custom hardwood furniture do you build with the great hardwoods native to the Washington, Washington, Washington. and Oregon? <laughs> you know, I would love to do more woodworking projects and I still do occasionally take them on, but in all honesty, it's not my main focus these days. And it's, in, again, in all honesty, because of COVID, because my once COVID hit and I was at that crossroads of trying to figure out, okay, do I do more of the woodworking, epoxy, creative endeavor area, or do we do more of the construction-based type stuff? And when COVID hit, I all of a sudden saw this massive spike within the DIY home improvement space. And my woodworking projects really weren't doing that considerably well, comparatively. So I just put all my cards into the home improvement space because that was literally what was paying the bills. Gotta go where it works. Yep. So uh, we, a lot of people don't know, we started out doing like tool videos. And like first six or 12, six out of 12 videos on my channel were tool videos. And then I kind of started doing some woodworking stuff. Anyway, long story short, you look at the analytics and see what's doing better, what what's performing, what's not, and you go with what, what is, because you're, this is a business, YouTube's a business. So that's kind of the, the way we looked at it too. So. Mm -hmm. Mike Adams has yeah, a question the, for you. And okay. the beautiful thing about this industry is that you never know where it's going to take you. you know, never. I, I literally this year, starting in literally two months ago or three months ago now, I started posting content from trade shows and it's absolutely exploded my channel. And it's something that I've never thought I'd be into, but I saw an interest there and I started posting more content from trade shows that I see from construction trade shows. And it's absolutely exploded my entire platform within two months or within two and a half months, I've generated over 130 million views 
and have gained 300,000 wow. new followers just from mainly trade show content. That's awesome. That's crazy. That is awesome. All right. Mike has a question. He says he grew up in construction the first half of his life, but he's always learning. He wants to know from you what skill in building are you interested in learning that you have not learned yet? Uh, well, Mr. Mike, uh, I don't use hand tools much at all. Which I like power tools. <laughs> but I am taking a class in May on cutting uh, hand-cut dovetails. Well, it's actually use hand-cut and then also two different types of jigs to see which one I like better. That's probably one thing I'm going to try and see. I don't think I'll like it. I don't have the patience for that stuff. Uh, but it would be nice to know how to do it. There's a name on here. It's T T U G H. I'm gonna say tough. Tough. <laughs> Call <him> tough. <laughs> tough. That's the way I read it. Tough. Uh, it says to me, congratulations on retirement. But they they have 29 years. They're retiring. Oof. But after 29 That's years, a long time. it's a long time. Congratulations to you, tough. <laughs> You're tough. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Emmer Henry says, Brent, uh, you've done a few epoxy countertops. Would you recommend them in general, or would you recommend a novice uh, to undertake doing it? Or would you not recommend it, I'm assuming? I feel like as long as you've actually worked with epoxy in the past, I would say you know, your own DIY individual can take it on. It's just a matter of... But depending on the type of epoxy project you're taking on, whether it's for a you know a standalone countertop or an entire kitchen or a, just a bathroom, there's a number of potential opportunities to do an epoxy countertop. But I'd say the steps are quite straightforward for the most part. It's just a matter of making sure you have you know those steps taken care of one at a time, and also making sure you do plenty of due diligence with your prep prior to even pouring. Make sure you understand really well how the epoxy works that you're working with. If not, test do a test area first. Yeah, yes, we did. Uh, we mm -hmm. used epoxy grout, and it, this first time we'd ever used it. Did not it, know you it had sets to keep up it cool. very fast. Oh my. Very fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have had experiences with epoxy grout, and it is not fun. <laughs> no, and I will never. Do, as a matter of fact, I have not touched another <laughs> towel saw yeah. or grout or anything since if i have to have anything done i hire it done now <laughs> and i used epoxy grout for that uh for the rounded uh, mm. uh wood wood stove so now if you know how to use it it works fun. great it, it's a beautiful grout to me i think yeah and it does, you know, doesn't chip out it doesn't uh, absorb anything like it's very durable oh. but you got to be quick. And that's why I used it because it was going in an mm -hmm. exterior area. So it was yeah. going to be, it needed very tough grout. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's tough to fix when you make a mistake. You do it, says Matt. <laughs> Some of the power tools you hold by hand. So ergo, ergo. you're using hand tools. <laughs> I saw that. Mr. Brett Lemke <laughs> says, uh, 731, how big of a demand is there for custom cabinet furniture? And where is the best place to showcase your goods? Uh, mm -hmm. Around here, like it's not a huge demand for it. There are some contractors that will do that, but mm -hmm. like it's we're in a town of ten thousand people though. It's hard it's to find to... anybody to do anything here, especially yeah. if it's a, a smaller job. Yeah, if it's a small, small job, small as in yeah, not okay. an entire house. Mm -hmm. But in larger populations, you may. I mean, you're still going to run into competition and stuff, but um, you 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 got more opportunity there anyway. I think custom cabinet, cabinet, uh, cabinet work and stuff is that's some of the most beautiful things. I, mean, I love watching videos on we that. We built a uh, custom in um, what do you call it? Closet. You know, we did mm -hmm. a custom closet makeover on the channel a while back. Of course, DIY doesn't do well on my channel because it's not my audience. Mm -hmm. And so when we do those projects every now and then, it's like I know that video is not going to do well, but we do them anyway. <laughs> Yeah, one of my best friends, he uh, he literally just made his own custom cabinets for his kitchen, like a full, like massive kitchen. And he's not a woodworker or a carpenter. So it was pretty impressive the fact that he actually did it himself. And yeah. of course, there was uh, trials and tribulations along the way. But the fact that, again, he was open to learning the process, he learned the steps and he did it himself. I think that's huge. I think that's where mm -hmm. a lot of people get stuck. It's like you said, just start. There's a million reasons why not to, but yep. if you start, you're going to figure it out. Like, especially when you don't have a kitchen, 
you got to figure it out. You got to eat. So everybody, you know, it's just, a, it's just the fact that you just got to start. And, you know, we, we've done several projects. We had no idea what we we're doing when we started, when we first started doing tile or when we started you know, repainting kids, cabinets, like we, there was a trial and error there. Cause we put the paint oh on before gosh. we sanded them. And then, then well, we you could take your out. finger and rub the paint oh, off. No. It was awful. So guess who had to sand oh. all the kitchen cabinets down? We did. We it, should it took have watched a long my time. video ahead of time. <laughs> we should have. <laughs> we did watch a video on how to prep them, but it said to buy certain things and to clean them. Yeah, well, just with wipe this, on, wipe, wipe off this stuff. And we started painting, and I was like, "This is never going to work." And we so painted we had the whole, to, all of them, all the doors, all the yeah, frames. Yeah, we had to start completely everything. over. Primer it was so paint. bad that I ended up getting sick because we were in the sawdust of it and we were sanding for days oh my gosh oh yeah uh, trial and error but we got oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know what we built upon ourselves and we That's learned right. we learned yeah, to hire that done for now. not to do <laughs> uh, yes oh my gosh that <laughs> uh, i've had so many people ask me since hey what should i do uh because i want to i want to paint my cabinets i want to redo them i'm like hire somebody <laughs> <laughs> that's what you should do honestly if we'd have done it right the first time like stripped them down sand yeah. them the first time without having to strip paint hey, and stain do you see all do you see all the alarms oh okay do you know what time it is power tip time <laughs> mr brent do you have a power tip for us a power tip so specifically anything in mind in in, in terms of construction it According be, to all of them, you've already given a power tip. Yeah, it could be life. It could <laughs> but be if you want to give another, <laughs> or you could just reiterate what you said earlier, because they loved it. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm, I love to hear that. But I would say, other than what I've already said before, and in terms of construction, just making sure you do your due diligence before taking on any project. You know, if especially as there's plenty of people out there that are novices, and I'm even a novice. Uh, I'm, I'm a novice all the time because I take on so many different projects. So it's more about before you take on these projects, make sure you do your research. And the beautiful thing about it is that we have such an amazing tool for learning, YouTube. It's, yep. one, of, it's one of the biggest search engines in the entire world, and it's at your fingertips. And there's so many opportunities to learn something new. Just make sure you are trying to do your due diligence to learn the process of doing it correctly prior to taking it on. So we gave you that idea about the cabinets, right? <laughs> That's what that's from. <laughs> no, I'm just being, we did not do our due diligence. That's a, No, we just say, that, hey, what's those truly really is something that you should do if you're planning on doing anything DIY. Mm -hmm. anything. Well, it's like you said, like if you're going to build a deck, you've never built a deck before. You need to make sure it's structurally sound because you don't want it falling in especially an elevated mm -hmm. deck. Like you don't want that thing collapsing on you or your family or your friends or your kids or anything like that. So <laughs> you can do it. You just need to research and figure out how to do it. Somebody said, watch YouTube constantly. <laughs> Lane said that. <laughs> Lane's right. Anytime, anytime, like you, anytime I, if I'm going to build something new, I've never built it before. I'm going to YouTube and searching. I'm going to watch three or four videos on other people building it and be like, okay, now I kind of got a grasp of what's mm -hmm. going on here. And it's just a mm -hmm. good way to, Learn. YouTube has been a game changer for, you know, people. The world. <laughs> it it really has. Um, I don't know. It's yeah, where you, I go. You, you can, <laughs> I go on YouTube all the time, and you know, maybe I have to repair a part in my 1995 Toyota Tacoma, and I type <laughs> it in, and voila, some random person thought about, oh, I'm going to post this really poor quality video, but I bet someone's going to want to watch it. Yep. <laughs> we, when we come back from California a couple of weeks ago, I got into my car for the first time to back out of the driveway, and my backup camera didn't come on. I literally stopped in my driveway and went to YouTube and put backup camera on, <laughs> year and make of my car, screen not working. And looked at a video, and I'm like, wait, why did I just watch a video on this? <laughs> it's not going to make my camera turn back on, but it's just what we do. You're conditioned to do it. <laughs> it's just what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, hey, it did tell me that, you know, my backup camera is probably going out. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't already know that. <laughs> oh, gosh. YouTube is wonderful, though. Fell into plan is planning to fail. Thank that was one of, the, uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I've said a lot because it was on the wall in the chow hall in the troop school. Was, they had that plaster everywhere. They would yell it at you, and it was all fun. 
very true and realistic statement. <laughs> so, Brent, do you have any cool projects coming up? Oh, so many. There, uh, the, the big one that I'm excited about that I'll be taking on in the next couple months is I'm going to do a – I'm going to build my own sauna as well as cold plunge. So I'm going to be putting that in the backyard and building it. I already have a couple video. Those Both those videos are sponsored, and it was basically just another great reason for me to do a project that I wanted to take on in the, uh, in the past that I haven't done before. And I've been recently producing a lot more uh, plans, like digital plans on how to actually build these things that I'm building because I'm actually showing you in a video format, but a lot of people actually really love the um, the aspect of build plans. So right. I've also been producing quality plans to go with my videos. Those are on your website? Um, actually on Etsy. I mean, Etsy. You, you can get them on my website, but Etsy is the main place that I, per, I sell nowadays. Okay. So Tough, his name is Joe, but he coached Troy United Girls Hockey. So he goes by the initials yeah. for T-U-G-H. There he is. That's yeah, there you cool. go. I like that. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up, Mr. Joe. <laughs> Sawdust. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he said, just saying. Of course you are. We, ha we have someone on here. There's who, a running joke. Yeah. It's about monkey poop coffee. Hey, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best high quality, most expensive <laughs> coffee you can get. You ever taste it? I have not. I would try it though, but would I would you really? Taste it. You I wouldn't? I, yep. I don't know. I might. <laughs> I'd have How to not know it until afterward though. Someone had to trick me and be like, "Oh yeah, did you know?" <laughs> you just drink. There's a new. Poop. There's a new YouTube channel. How many of y'all would like for me to make a secret video of him trying dog what? poop coffee? Dog? No. <laughs> it's gotta be a monkey. I don't have any monkeys around here. You better buy one. <laughs> You said you would be all right as long as you didn't know ahead of time. That would There's be There's a new hilarious. YouTube channel that I started watching recently called Best Food Review Show Ever, and he goes you know all over the United all over the world, basically showcasing different cultures and how they cook and eats very unique items that I I thought I was an adventure adventurous eater and yeah. I saw him and I was like oh I wouldn't touch I that. I know I'm <laughs> no not. <way. laughs> I am. Mm. Not, I don't eat. I am probably one of the pickiest eaters in the world. My my students make fun of me for it almost daily. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not much. I um, but those shows and travel, our stuff are cool. I used to travel all over Asia before I, I quit my job, and and did this full time. But I would be traveling all over China, Malaysia, Singapore. And one of the most unique things that I ha have ever eaten was beef tendon soup, like as in literally the tendon of beef. Mm. And mm. let's just say it was quite chewy. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. That's gross. <laughs> yeah, we had a dead bird everything. in our yard. And I come in after seeing it, and he was eating a chicken sandwich, and his chicken sandwich almost made me gag, so... <laughs> it yeah. was rough all right now we're getting off in the weeds here yeah <laughs> so i ate snails and i thought it was adventurous <laughs> i used to put salt on those all right babe <laughs> we've taken a bunch of time before we let you go i just appreciate you coming on and sharing your uh, knowledge with us and and your experiences is there any advice you would give someone who's just starting out uh, whether they're wanting to do diy projects at home or starting their own diy business uh, is there any advice you give them as they get started? Uh, more as a contract, or assuming more as a content creator, or more as like a, just a builder? Yeah, a builder, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it just kind of reiterates to the point of, of what I've said in the past of continuously build and learn upon yourself. There's, you know, you can't always guarantee that you're going to have that proper individual in your life teaching you the, the ways to do things. It, there's apprenticeships that are extremely valuable and key. And if you can get into those, great, because those are an amazing wealth of knowledge and uh, the element and thought process of, you know, having that 
that skill set is so important these days because just as you see, all these uh, all these tech companies are firing people left and right and laying people off. But guess what? Construction is a powerhouse that you'll have your ups and downs, but there will always be in need of people that know how to do construction, plumbing, electrical. That's never going to go away. <laughs> so having have that skill set and and if you can't find that individual in your town, in your area, luckily, the vast majority of people out there, especially in the United States, have the access of internet. So mm -hmm. you can always look up how to do things and build upon yourself. And I've always said, like, Instagram to me is one of the most welcoming social media platforms as far as the woodworking and building niche because I can literally message somebody that's building something and say, hey, how did you do X, Y, Z? And within an hour, probably usually they're going to answer me back, and usually a detailed answer. Like, and they'll they'll do more than anything they or do most anything they can to help you uh, with what you're working on. And they have no skin in the game; they're not getting anything out of that other than just wanting to be helpful. That's one thing I love about Instagram. Yeah, no, that was really fun because I. It's funny you bring that up because we, if people don't know already, we met at WorkbenchCon this year. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was, was that I had multiple people come up to me this year and say thank you for my advice to them via Instagram or or, or email. Yeah. And I, I never even, th you know, I never really thought about those individuals that I'm helping and actually thought I was going to meet them one day. Right. But all of a sudden, some people randomly come up to me saying, oh, thank you so much for your advice that you gave me, you know, such and such time. And I, it, it was really nice to hear all of a sudden, you know, seeing individuals that are really trying to make a footprint for themselves and actually appreciate the, the small amount of, of advice that I gave them at that point. Yep, it is awesome. It was awesome to meet you in person too. Yeah, when I saw the BYOT, I looked at him and I said, oh, bring your own tools. <laughs> and then he said, that's all right. I was, I was really proud of myself that I got it so quick. So you know how you come up with that name? <laughs> how? I'll let him tell you. It's on his website. I read it. Oh. Uh, how did no. you come up with that name? <laughs> yeah, it's again, it's, uh, it's the testament to an amazing supportive wife because it was one of those items that I, before I started my YouTube channel, I was wondering what I was going to call it. I, I thought about it for weeks, couldn't th think of a good name. And I leaned over to my wife while we we're driving to dinner one night. And I said, what do you think I should call this thing? Like, I, I can't even think of something. And she, within five seconds, she just blurts out BYOT, bring your own tools. And I was like, well, where did this come from? And were you, were you just waiting for me to ask? Because this was a gem out of nowhere that will probably last my entire uh, lifetime and and be the footing and, and it's perfect. footprint of what wherever this takes us <laughs> yeah it's perfect it, it's awesome it's a it's a it's just an excellent brand name too it is. it's just good i like it because anybody that like i think it resonates with i'm I, I mean i know i do this with him and stuff but really this is his gig that he does i i like fashion and you know, purses and shoes and stuff. I'm not going to lie about it. Um, and immediately I knew what it was. And so I think that's important. Yeah, I think it's a recognizable, recognizable name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, I know BYOB is what, you know, the original one, but everybody we is going to know what it, that. and if they know that you're in construction and there's a T there, they're going to know what it is, mm -hmm. or most people are anyway. Yep. Any, so any of I the think it's DIY or trade, anything like that. It's mm -hmm. awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, obviously, really if you're in the trades, you generally know what it is. But it, the vast majority of people that ask me what BYT stands for, and I say, "What do you think?" The, I'd say at least half the people say tools. Yeah, and so at least oh, you know, fun. for all the T's that could be out there, at least half the people say T. So it means yeah. that it, it does resonate with a lot I of people. I think so. I think it resonates. Yeah, it's it's like you know the guy we had was. last week, Mark the Builder. You know, it's that's a genius name too mm -hmm. because it's Mark Period the Builder. That's his brand name. It's just you know. I'm sure you made him at Workbench Conti. Yeah, he was he was the one with the orange hat, the tall one with the orange hat. Yep. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think names like that that resonate with people are great because those are the names that you remember. Mm -hmm. So. All right, man. No, I love it. I'm I don't take it it too much of your time. I know you got a, a newborn baby at home to take care of, and I'm sure your wife's needing a break. <laughs> <laughs> she 
she probably would not, would uh, completely agree with you. But <laughs> in any case, thank you both so much for your time. Thank Thanks you, everyone, coming. that actually asked me some questions. Hopefully, they were helpful. And uh, again, hopefully, you will also be following my channel and your guys' channel to learn new fun skill sets. All right, man. Absolutely. Y'all go follow him. Links in the description to both his TikTok as well as YouTube. And then, of course, his website's there on the screen. So go check him out. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, guys. So if you haven't already, go ahead and go check his channel out. Yep, go check him out. Look, you make sure you look at I'll that deck. The deck is awesome, y'all. Yeah, the deck is a <laughs> man. That project is fantastic, and he it was is. he was basically the uh, uh, general contractor over that project. If you watch the video, that there's two parts of that video that you can watch, and it is a is a awesome transformation of that uh, backyard there. That's in Florida. It was a project he collaborated with on. And then there was a hurricane that hit in the second uh, video. Crazy. It was pretty, pretty funny to see that. And it's just all around good good content that he's producing mm -hmm. over there. And any type of DIY project for the, pretty much for your home, if you can think of it, he's probably got one other than the dog shower, which may be coming soon. So you can go check that out. But we're talking everything, like from the backyard transformations, greenhouses, uh, patios, stairs I mean, you just scroll through his his uh youtube channel and you'll see there's tons and tons and tons of projects uh, if you've got something going on in your house you need advice or want to see how somebody else did it go check him out for sure um the angry wood turner he retracted his message but had asked <laughs> had asked since i was retiring if i was going to start my own yes that's the plan however the first thing that i want to work on uh when i come home is we want to do some type of online program thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it'd be a course. A course, yeah. an online course. So that's going to be our first thing. But yes, I've already got the mm -hmm. name of it. He hasn't helped me get everything set up I'm yet. Waiting on, <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> waiting on him. Um, but yeah, I am. I'm excited about that. All right. Well, but it's going to be nothing like this stuff. What? Well, that's rude. Nothing like this stuff. What does that mean? Woodworking. Oh, I thought you just meant like me. Nothing like that stuff over there. I didn't say that stuff over there. <laughs> Hot stuff. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> All right. We'll leave bring you on your own bread. <laughs> bring your own bread. Alien. I thought it was bring your own biscuits because that's kind of the motto of the family reunions we used to have. You know, everybody <laughs> bring your own biscuits to the family reunion. But, uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your own Bible. Yes, Stephanie, you're I right. Like it. That's a good. There, one. there you go. That's See, this good. is why you're the program director, Stephanie. Keeping us on track. Gosh, somebody bring your asked own me trimmers. earlier where I got the shirt. Almost all the shirts I buy, and I buy them from Caruso. Caruso. You can get them Caruso.com. It's K-E-R-U-S-S-O.com. Uh, I am in talks with them to be an affiliate with them, but we haven't said. There's a yet. Caruso uh, thing in the marketplace here now. Is it really? Yeah. I oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah a little mm -hmm. pop-up thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just oh, well, bring your own trimmers. I mean, bring your own tools. <laughs> said thanks so much for having me. Had a blast. Had a blast, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Who said bring your own trimmers? That was funny, Lane. Lane. Lane, you're a mess. <laughs> he said he was eating coffee beans while ago. <laughs> Lane did. Anyway, Steph said hot stuff. Huh. Chris Oliver says, <laughs> I bought your mallet template. Can you please? Uh, what size material for the handle? I use three quarter inch thick material and then whatever size or, you know, the width of the handle is about uh, three quarter work. Great. By the time you uh, put chamfer around the edges or round over, which I did three eighths inch round over, it just, it fits just right. It's just right. Yep. Well, I think that's it. I think so. I got to go. Steam all the clothes for our son's trip tomorrow. <laughs> I hope y'all have an awesome week. i uh, be looking for a very unique video. Not unique, but it's a. It's 99% of people don't know about it. It's, it's on Thursday, so be sure and check that out. And if it's after Thursday, go back and watch it. That's and right. also be sure and uh, subscribe to BYOT on yes. YouTube. Uh, let him know we sent you over there. If you see one of his videos, just comment from 731 Works. That way he knows uh, uh, you saw him on this stream. And that would be helpful to him and let him know that uh, you did watch the stream and you appreciate him coming on and we appreciate his time. He he gets paid nothing out of these things, these guests we bring on. Hey, Trey. Uh, and I 
basically reach out to them and say, hey, would you mind coming on? I'll find their uh, content interesting. That's how we get these, uh, mm-hmm. uh, that's how we basically pick who comes on. It's if we find their content interesting or their story interesting and want to share it with you. And uh, he's doing an excellent job. Love you too, Steph. So y'all go check him out. All right. All right, guys. Y'all have a good week. Y'all have a good night.